Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we're doing 2000s next Friday. Before we get started, if you want to follow us on the social medias, you could follow the show at Kiss the Reviews on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. And we'll get into the, the cast of 2000s next Friday. But before we do, we apologize for doing these movies out of order. It's my fault I can't <laughs> read. You cost us thousands of dollars because you can't read. It's actually not my fault. I think I suffer from fetal alcohol syndrome. So really, thanks, Mom. I, I suffer from adult alcohol syndrome. <laughs> I suffer from not taking responsibility, so I'm blaming everybody but myself for my illiteracy. That's fair. It's my bad. It's my bad, Steph. I'm sorry. What do you want? What do you want? That's fair. So we're doing we're doing a makeup, and uh, here's next Friday. But this film stars <laughs> Ice Cube as Craig Jones, Mike Epps as Day Day, John Witherspoon as Mr. Jones, Don DC Curry as Uncle Roy, Lisa Rodriguez as Carla, and Tom Lister Jr. as Debo. I know we shoot our shots a lot on this show, and a lot of it's funny. <laughs> Yeah, and we're like, ah, I'm available. Hey, yo, Kim Whitley, we need to have a fucking chat, girl. On dogs, you need to fucking call me now. <laughs> God damn! I didn't hear a word that was said when Aunt Sugar was on that fucking screen. Nothing. Nothing. I heard nothing. You know what? Better watch yourself. You're going to get a call one of these days. I'm telling you right now, if God made a woman specifically for me, her fucking name is Kim Whitley. Thank you. We know, Corey. We know. Mm. And if you mm, don't know, mm, mm, mm. now you know. Mm. But I'm out. This... That's all I got. That's all I wanted to say about this fucking movie. My business was, is done. That was Peace. Corey's. That was Corey's favorite part of the movie. Indeed. But, yeah. But this movie opens where Friday left off because you know Ice Cube has got to give us the Cliff Notes version of the first movie, and Debo is breaking out of prison. He catches Craig and Mr. Jones as they're driving to Rancho Cucamonga to move in Craig with his uncle Elroy and his cousin Day Day. Corey's Life Lessons! Hi, Convicts. Uncle Corey here. It's dope you're breaking out, and I am not getting in your shit. You break out. But when the dudes from your neighborhood know you're planning to break out next Friday, the motherfucking guards do too, bitch. Shape up. Tighten your fucking ship up. This is crazy. This is crazy, and I have a don't do that for Debo. Don't do that, it's not good for you. Hi, Debo's breaking out of prison. Um, the minute you, I don't know, scale the wall or whatever they do here, that's cool. You're breaking out. I'm kind of with Corey. I'm, I'm going to stay out of your way. You do your thing, right? But after you break out, you might want to lose the orange jumpsuit that you're wearing for the rest of this goddamn movie. Just... The rowing it out there when the shit says county jail on the back. That's not just a fashion choice. Okay. You've broken out of prison. A million people can see you. And you don't think anybody's going to snitch? Come on now. We're, we're all adults here. Let's have that conversation. It's a fair point. And we could also have the conversation of how uh, Day Day and Uncle Elroy got their money to move out to Rancho Cucamonga because they won the lottery. And the, obviously they couldn't get uh, Chris Tucker in this movie. So they said that Smokey went to rehab. For weed? Or did he go like the Chris Rock route and start smoking that, that crack rock? And that's why he went. Because he, he went, it, it reminds me of that, uh, the Dave Chappelle scene where he goes to rehab for a weed and everybody just rips on him. That's what I was. It's exactly what I was thinking. Like you ever suck dick for weed? <laughs> no. 
Get the fuck out of here. What are you doing? I used to suck dick for coke. I seen him. Now that's an addiction, man. You ever suck some dick for marijuana? Yeah. Huh? Literally Bob Saget's best appearance in a movie, hands down. Yeah, but yeah, so so Smokey's in, in rehab. Cool, man. So Day Day here shows Craig around. They see the Joker brothers. Day Day shows Craig his car. He introduces Craig to his neighbor, Mrs. Ho Kim. And he also meets his aunt, Sugar. And that's Corey's favorite character in the movie. So if you want to take a moment to just discuss that scene, um, go be my guest. <laughs> All I'll say is if that was my aunt, she's getting fucked. Is it possible this story is true? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's going to be a porn up movie. Mm -hmm. I walk in the door and that's what jumps on me. Mm -hmm. Bye. Hey, stuff. See you guys at the end of this <laughs> fucking movie when the credits are rolling. And we also here get Day Day's mm -hmm. ex-girlfriend coming over, keying mm -hmm. his car. And so there's that whole thing. So he goes into his like explanation. And I'll say this. I actually... I liked Day Day in Next Friday way more than I liked. It's almost like they dumped him down even more for the third one. Yeah, it's really what I was saying earlier, because that kept going through my mind almost from the second Mike Epps came out. Yeah. Having seen Friday after Next, before Next Friday, Mike Epps is really good at playing a coward. He's yes. not very good at playing a fucking moron. Yeah. So in this, as a coward, he was great. He's a normal guy, smokes weed, doing his job, not fucking crazy about anything or anyone. Yeah. Right? What the hell happened to him at the end where <laughs> in between these two Fridays where he just goes complete? Like, did he start smoking crack? Did he get Nino's <laughs> crack? Yeah, he got that Nino got... Brown crack and he has <laughs> gone off the reservation. A hundred percent. Absolutely. But no, this is this is Mike Epps wheelhouse is this yeah. character. And he's fantastic. He's so no, funny. He's great in this movie. Like I liked him so much in this movie. And that the third movie was I was just like, uh, they just they just like did him dirty. They're like, well, we're just gonna make yeah. you a little dumber this time. But yeah, whatever. We get Debo's dude his brother or whatever, calling the random burrito stand to give Mr. Jones the message that Craig's in trouble so they can jump in the back of the dog catcher truck and hitch a ride to, to get Craig. I think you've had an idea for this script, and I think the studio or somebody involved, maybe just Cube himself, because John Witherspoon basically did the first movie for free, was like, we have got to get him in the script again. People love that character. Yeah. He blew up. Like, he was big at Boomerang, and then he just blew up after playing Craig's dad. Yeah. So having him come back in the sequel was almost necessary. Absolutely. And they just don't think they knew what to do with him, because it seems like from almost the second this movie starts where you see him, until the end, he's just kind of there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, his character doesn't really add anything to this movie whatsoever outside of being silly with dog shit on him all day. And then, oh, now I got to go take a shit. And, oh, yeah. look, I ran into Stanley later spraying my spray. And we get it. You're doing the John Witherspoon things, and they're fucking dope. That's why you're doing them. Yeah. But also, it adds nothing to this movie whatsoever. No, no. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. But we then get Craig here meeting Carla, the Joker's brother's sister. Um, and right after that, they get a delivery of a delinquency notice. Craig gets it, and then Craig brings it to Day Day. Mm -hmm. And they, oh, this is my favorite. This is the simplicity I love about these movies. Because in in a in a normal movie, it's like oh, because they they bought the house in cash, so all they really got to pay is taxes on it, 
And so they get the delinquency notice and it was like 3,900, like you owe 3,900 bucks by tomorrow. I love the simplicity of, yeah, it's got to be always by tomorrow, which yep. you're owing taxes on Saturday. Like you got to pay it uh, like Saturday's the last day and that's when it goes to auction or whatever. Like, cool, whatever. But it's always an amount of money that you can gather pretty quickly by either robbing one person or, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's what I love is the simplicity of, okay, we need to get from Friday to Saturday and we we have to get this amount of money. Oh, you happen to live next to the Joker brothers who are obviously dealing drugs or doing whatever. They're doing all kinds of dirty shit and they have like their little, their pump of goddamn cash. <laughs> oh yeah, house. this is... This is in white movies and every white movie where they needed to grab there's some money. It's twenty thousand dollars if you win the big contest. And <laughs> hey guys, we could save it if we enter this. We can win. <laughs> yeah. Same fucking thing every time. <clears throat> so yeah, no, this these parts are great. And you did skip over the fact where Craig got the tax lien and went into uh Uncle Elroy's room and unveiled once again, that movie writers know what's in my bedroom because <laughs> my sex dungeon is completely released to the world. Every fucking dildo I have and everything. I'm These like, what are, the hell, bro? This whole thing is great because he gets high with his aunt and uncle. <laughs> and then the aunt and uncle go upstairs to like bang and do like the weird freaky Corey shit. Um, and th this is when Craig bring brings him the letter, which I actually find funny because they're like sleeping now. They still got like fucking all their shit on. They're passed out. And then Craig ends up in the middle of them and is basically mm -hmm. getting attacked. And his aunt's trying to fuck them. And like th I, this whole scene was really funny. And again, going back to I know Ice Cube isn't like the king of Pratt Falls or anything, but like he's really good just comedically in here trying to get the fuck away from his aunt and uncle yes every time his aunt grabs him it's hysterical because yes. he's always trying to pull away and you know she's always going to take it way too far yep and did you notice when he walks in the room there's a video playing on the projector screen and it's just his <laughs> aunt in a different set of bondage yes who made like this video that's playing while they're having sex i fucking love it this is oh, my kind like of woman dude she's drinking <laughs> wine and smoking at 10 a.m. and then going up to fuck. Hell yes. That's rock star ah, shit right there. God bless America, man. <laughs> Every time I give up hope in this country, I'm just going to watch next Friday. No. Just that scene. It's worth fighting for. Absolutely. But so this is when Craig goes, he gives the uh, the tax lien to, to Day Day. Day Day here, while he's working at the record store, gets found and chased by Duana's sister, Baby D, until he gets away by offering up Craig to Baby D. Did you recognize Baby D? I didn't. Is it Lady of Rage? <laughs> Fucking A right, it is. There you go. I was just, I had to, I had to go back straight, through the. I was the, like, oh shit. I had to go back through the mental Rolodex. I was like, I no. And I was like, oh yeah, I think that's Lady of Rage. Afro Puffs was my shit back in the day. <laughs> exactly. But FYI, too, if you're getting chased and about to get your ass kicked, don't like Craig gets thrown under the bus so much by Day Day and basically both movies. Where mm -hmm. by the third movie, you know, family or not, I'm pretty sure Craig would have just beat the fuck out of Day Day. You were right. Unless he hooks you up with it late with fucking the Lady of Rage. Yes, please. <laughs> There's another one. We're fucking line them up. Bruh. Let's do this. We also hear Get Pinky arriving at the record store. He sees it's been locked up while Day Day, Craig, and Roach are in the back getting high. He thinks Craig broke in and is robbing the place, so he holds Craig up at gunpoint. They start to wrestle until Greg gets Pinky's gun, turns it on him, and Pinky then fires both Day Day and Roach here. After he finds out that Craig is, is Day Day's cousin. Okay, when I first saw this movie, I wasn't a huge fan of the Pinky character. 
But this time around, I, I really was a huge fan of this character in this movie. Like, I just, oh, yeah, I he's awesome. He's, I think he's fantastic. Like, mm -hmm. he was the only character missing from coming to America. Like, this, <laughs> I feel like he should have been in that movie too. No, he was great. He was great. Just the whole idea of the record store and him driving yeah. the pink, or having the pink limo. Then, of course, you know, the the Abbott and Costello moment where he, answer my question. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. And ask him another question. Say another word. Like that whole back and forth is fantastic. And they, they both did a really good job with that. And then the tables being turned where Pinky turns into a bitch and yeah. was crying and almost shits on himself. It's fucking great. Like that yeah. whole scene's just, it's, again, it's one of those things where does it serve a purpose in the plot? No. Yeah. Is it fucking hysterical? Yes. It's a great yeah. scene. It's just no. good comedy. It's kind of like this show. Is it necessary? No. <laughs> Will it make you laugh? Yes. We hope so. But yes, no, it should. It fucking will. And if it doesn't, I don't want to fucking hear about it. Take your business across the street. <laughs> <laughs> Take your business elsewhere. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I don't need it here, Buster. <laughs> so we cut to back at home. Craig sees one of the Joker brothers carrying a hydraulic pump from their car inside. And he thinks there's cash in there. You know how you know there's cash in there? Because there's literally cash spilling out of the side of this pump. It's, it's one of my favorite parts because he's like, man, I think there's cash in there. See how they're holding it? No. You know how there's cash in there? There's, it's literally coming out of the top. Of the it's spilling pump. out of the top. There's a lot of cash in there. It's very clear. And yes. the only the only thing that saved that scene for me, too, because Craig's like, hey, you know, take a look at that canister. You, you see what I see? And Day Day is such a bitch. He's just like, I don't see nothing. Yeah. That's what saved it. Because otherwise, it's like, yeah, motherfucker, of course I see what you see. There's a bunch of green paper falling out of this canister. What else could it be? There's literally 40 grand shoved in this hydraulic pump. No, I don't see that at all. So Craig here gets the idea to break into the house, steal the, the pump, the cash. So he breaks in, he steals the cash and the pump. And while Roach distracts the, the Joker's dog, gets him high. And Craig basically has to sneak all around the house and like try to get away from the Joker brothers and not get noticed. And then he ends up in Carla's room where he flirts with her before getting away out of her upstairs window. And what I liked here is that Craig, so Ice Cube in, in writing this, when you're writing a character for yourself, you always have a tendency, even in comedies, to make your character just a little cooler. You know, mm -hmm. still funny, but you're just, you're the cool guy. Like, nah, I'm getting pussy, whatever. Right. What I loved about this and what I loved about Ice Cube's writing is, so he's trying to get away face-to-face -face with Carla. They flirt a little bit and like, he's like, what's up? And then he goes to leave and he falls off the roof. Again, <laughs> he's not a pratfall king, but like this scene is great because it's like, oh, when you're watching it for the first time, it's like he made himself just the cool guy. Like, I'm, I'm the cool guy that beat up Debo and yada, yada. But, like, he's also now falling into bushes and doing shit. Like, I I personally like that. No, you're 100% correct, dude. Uh, like, I wrote my first book was loosely me, and I intentionally made myself a way bigger asshole than I am just so I didn't do that. And then I stopped writing yeah. about myself altogether because yeah. that you're exactly right. It's it's very dangerous to write something where you're putting yourself in as the main character, especially when you know you're going to act as yeah. that main character. It's one thing to write it for somebody else, but like, that's just crazy. So no, for him to do that, another example of that is when he first runs in the room and he's like, you know, I came here to show your punk ass brothers. I ain't scared of them and you don't have to be either. And then as soon as the brother comes in, he hides. Yes. You know what I mean? He could have stepped out from around that corner even and been like, hey, man, don't talk to her like that. Fuck you. And then the fight happens. Yeah. Wasn't necessary. It's funnier for him to hide. So 
I think that is a good, really good point for anybody that is writing out there. This is a great example. If you want to be a writer actor in your own shit, understand who your character is and understand what the movie is. This is a fucking comedy. Yeah. He's just an ordinary guy in this fucked up situation. That's what makes it funny. And him trying to be cooler than he is brings it out. And yeah. as you can tell by Ice Cube, it's not like it hurt as a rap. I don't know many people being like, man, Ice Cube's a punk bitch. No. Because no, of next still Friday. Fucking Ice Cube. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. it, the comedy thing doesn't hurt your rep. So don't be afraid to take that leap and fall down. If oh, it yeah. makes you money. Oh, ab dude, absolutely. If you're doing a comedy, this is just part and parcel. The The fact that he wrote himself like that and wrote his character like doing dumb shit and falling over and hiding and whatever. That's just a testament to him. Like he took himself completely out of it and said, we're just writing a comedy here, guys. The shit just needs 100%. to be funny. Um, but we also have Day Day and Roach knocking on the joker's front door to try to help craig out craig's already dipped but the brothers take roach and day day hostage you know tie him up in the in the family room they notice that the money's gone and they're basically accusing day day and roach of of taking it and going back to your point of mike epps playing the coward this is where like all that shit shines and what I really love is when they first get him in the house and they got the chicks on the, mm -hmm. on the couch and Day Day and Roach are like, hey, what's up, guys? You guys want to hang out? Like, what's going on in here? Like, they're trying to hit on the girls. And then immediately, as soon as they get tied up, it just becomes like, I'm, I'm a complete bitch and I'm going to start crying and whatever. I just I love this whole scene. And Mike Epps is fantastic. Oh, yeah, this is this is quintessential Mike Epps. Yep. So then we have Mr. Jones finally getting to the house to save Craig and Debo and Debo's younger brother, Tyrone, get out of the back of the dog catcher truck. Mr. Jones, Uncle Elroy, along with Craig, go next door to save the day. And they knock out two of the Joker brothers. Elroy is able to free Day Day and Roach inside. And as they wrestle with Joker outside, Debo shows up, knocks Joker out. And then the police show up and, and arrest all the, the Joker brothers and Debo. And, and this is the, the end of the movie. I don't know. For me, I think this is where like things fell apart the first time I saw it. <laughs> like the whole Debo getting out of prison and then tracking Craig down. The whole fact that Debo even went to prison that, that night was like, dude, Craig just beat the shit out of you. Everybody went inside. But apparently the cops came out and and took Debo. This this whole storyline with Debo kind of just if they just you could just have the Joker brothers. Yeah, Debo wasn't necessary at all. There's a million different places, especially in comedy, where you could have went where everything goes the exact same, but the AK is not really an AK. It's a cigarette lighter. You know what I mean? There's a yeah. million different things that could happen. That just never really happened. So having this go in there, yeah, it's a crutch. And it's it's that typical, like, everything tied together conveniently. Isn't that nice? But also, having watched, I don't know, a million or two of, of comedies, that's how comedies wrap up. They have to do it. You're already in a place that's, even if it's set in this reality, Yep. The hijinks and the antics involved take you so far out of the real reality, actual reality, that the nice convenient bow tie at the end, it doesn't bother me anymore. I mean, you know, it's this, Three Amigos, fucking Tropic Thunder. It doesn't matter what the comedy is. It always yeah. has that happen. It has to. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I just So in that, like... Yeah, it doesn't take does it like the like I said earlier, like the whole Debo and Johnny Witherspoon part of this, it's not necessary. Is it cool to see, you know, him on screen every time? But it's not necessary to the script. But that being said, it's comedy. I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh no, no. What? That, that, well, that's the other thing too. In 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 a lot of comedies, you 
you give comedies a wide berth. There's obviously yeah. stretches in the script and and things, um, but just by the nature of the genre it is. But um, no, I mean, at the end of the day, like I know we can, we shit on the third one a bit. This one isn't as bad as I remember it being. Like I remember mm-hmm. it being worse and not as funny. At the end of the day, it's definitely not as funny as Friday. But this one's no. not a it's not a bad movie. No, if like, this movie came out first, it would have been a good movie. It would have never yeah. been as big as Friday, but it was it was a good movie. It was a funny movie. Um yeah. I think it's a good continuation, you know, with Chris Tucker not being able to come back, with DJ Pooh not getting a writing credit on this one. And Cube kind of being by himself. I think he did a really good job with it. Um, could it have used an extra set of eyes and typing hands? Yeah, probably. But that being said, way better than the third one. Like the third one, this actually made me hate the third one that much more. Yes. Because it's like, what happened? What did you well, do? With that said... I'm glad we reviewed the third one before we reviewed this one because the th- if we did it in order, I think the the review of the third one would be much worse than it was. Yes, sir. But no, that's all I got, man. It, 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 this movie's it's it's a good movie. It's funny. It's obviously not the original, um, but it was a decent continuation of the story, and there was a lot of funny parts that were different than the funny parts in the first one. Like the third one just went back and revisited all the jokes. Yeah. So no, I'm, I'm good with this one. Uh, Do you have anything else for this edition? Yeah. I know. Like we had some fun and shit and like, but you know, seriously, Kim Whitley, like you're beautiful. You're an amazing actress. And sincerely, I will eat your ass. (laughs) <laughs> that's a first that's a first for the kiss and review show i think we can end it there would you agree well if you can't end it there i don't know where you where you can it always ends on the ass eating for Corey, i'm armando this is kiss the reviews and this was 2000s next friday <laughs>